Welcome to the 200 Mile Hot Club. Little consummation slash space exploration. Earth's equivalent to smoke something slash fuck something. About to hit that zero G spot. Yeah, baby. The future of humanity depends on it. Tell them about it, scientists. The future of the human race itself may eventually depend on one question. Can we have sex in space? Told you. Now you might ask, why? Well, let me tell you. Let's say we need to travel off to a place and start up a new colony, but it takes 400 years to get there. Nobody lives to be 400 years old. So they'll have to make babies on the way there, raise them to keep the mission going, and they'd have to make babies and raise them to keep the mission going. And then they babies would raise babies, and then they babies fuck around, be the ones to make it to the new planet and start up the colony and keep it going. You know what I mean? So we all good, let's go. But actually performing sex in space is easier said than done. Explain. The number one enemy of sex in space is Isaac Newton's laws of motion. The third law of motion, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. If you push against something, it pushes against you. So we're gonna have to learn tediously a new law of human behavior when it comes to sex and space. Yeah, but see this sex craze lady right here? Never mind the guy next to her, it's like a husband or something. But this is Vona Bonta, and she's developed this suit called the Two Suit. And it'll keep you and your partner connected up there so y'all can do y'all thing and Kind of act those laws of physics that don't want you to get your groove on. Oh, yeah, baby. Won't you uh, tell us a little bit more about this suit, Vana? The two-suit is a utilitarian garment that uh, functions by itself as a flight suit and can unzip or attach with Velcro and attach to a partner's suit with um, very lightweight fabric inside that can expand. Now I admit those suits look real silly, but we get the point. We just float up towards each other in mid air, attach and match. Yeah, baby, float on it. But look at the insides of these ships. They all cluttered. What can a player like myself get his bump and grind on without pulling none of these plugs out the wild that might kill everybody? Oh, yeah. Me, me, and the tunnel, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Won't one of you astronauts give us the blueprints? The crew area of the space shuttle comprises just over 2,200 cubic feet, about the same area as an average-sized living room. In terms of the space shuttle orbit, the best place to have sex is the airlock leading out into the cargo bay. It's big enough for two people. If there's any place on board the shuttle, that's where it might happen. So there you have it, the best place to join the 200 mile hot club. And it's a well known fact that if your girl's a six here on earth, she's an eight in space, ain't no gravity, so her titties is way perkier. Just ask any one of these scientists, man. I think people are better looking in space. Their faces get a little bit more flush, uh, women's breasts get larger. With the face being a little more puffy, the wrinkles go away, the legs are thinner because there's less fluid down there. Uh, women don't need bras because there's nothing to pull them down. See, perky and tips. But looking sexier doesn't help you grapple with the physics of microgravity sex. I agree. Check out these damn fools trying to do their thing in these stupid looking ass suits in the zero G environment. Explain this, please. The problem is you've still got mass. If somebody was to push down on somebody very hard, they could send them off in another direction across the cabin of a spaceship and could do severe damage. You can break a penis physically, and it's actually very difficult to then, you know, do the operation to get it all back together again. In light of the challenges, what would the experts say if they were invited into space to have a go at hitting the zero G spot? Sure. <laughs> Old ass freaks. Oh yeah, I'd be there. I'd be there. I'd be. I would have sex in space instantly. Instantly. 
I'm a scientist, and as a scientist, we like to observe. We like to study from a distance, but we don't like to partake. We don't like to interfere with the subject we are studying. That's a true ass scientist for you. I, I really don't know. <laughs> it's something I've really not thought about. I've thought more about giving birth in space, actually. <laughs> Ew. Now, we didn't see these silly ass suits. I know y'all got some more Memphis, baby. Let me in. Another method, supposedly once tested in the tanks NASA uses to train astronauts, is called the three dolphin technique. Two dolphins sometimes have a hard time coupling together. A third one that can press them together actually makes it easier for the coupling process to happen. That may well happen in zero gravity also. You might want to have a third person to help facilitate you or keeps you in the middle of a zero gravity environment. Ah, the three dolphin technique, a space menage. Thank you, dolphins. If you don't like the fact that I like that, troll me. One thing everyone does agree upon is that one or more of the mating partners needs to be restrained. What you could have is some hand holds and perhaps leg holds, similar, made out of bar kind of materials. Any mechanism that would simulate constraints on motion that would at all mimic gravity probably uh, facilitate do you want to seal it? Mating do you want to seal it? Could be Velcro. Just turn and around, one baby. of the parties could Dude, wrap yeah. legs around something and, and be able to secure him or herself with their knees. Mm -hmm. And then perhaps footholds similar to the kind of things you put your feet in in water skis mm -hmm. to secure the bottom. For sex and space, I think you might want a seatbelt. Really? A seatbelt? Pajama looking suits? One guy even said duct tape. And they could do it all with duct tape. I'm not saying that duct tape is a sexual aid in space. I'm just saying duct tape is like the force. It has a light side and dark side, and it binds the universe together. Harvey's invention sounds very good to me. Uh, for one thing, it doesn't involve a third party, the so-called dolphin effect. Uh, which I think would be quite uncomfortable for me. Well, I'd love to be the third party of that session any day. If you don't like it, troll me. Now, don't get to thinking that all the fun is just for the astronauts. Because this guy who owns Virgin Galactic will put you and whoever else got $200,000 right up in the space, baby. Let y'all do y'all thing. Oh, yeah. Float on it. See, but the Virgin Galactic Project ain't got a damn thing on John Spencer's space yacht. My, my, my. Tell us what we can expect from this space beast. We're talking about entertainment. We're talking about fun. We're talking about drinking. We're talking about sex. We're talking about all sorts of wild and crazy things here. Well, I like the sound of that. I'm going to start saving up right now. Fly me out to the space yacht. Hello, 200 Mile Hot Club. This is a mock-up of John's space yacht. I'm designing a discotheque. This would be right here in the center section here. This would be a central sphere. Imagine, if you will, a giant 60-foot diameter sphere that will be almost completely glass or some type of glass-like material, and you can see in all directions. And then you'll have people floating around and dancing and sailing and doing all sorts of things for entertainment and for pleasure and for fun. Now, after a long night of dancing and carousing and having a lot of fun, um, the couple want to have a little bit more fun. Yeah, baby. On Earth, that might include a romantic interlude in a hot tub. John Spencer envisions a space-based hot tub he calls a hot sphere. Wow. You can imagine that your honeymoon suite is a sphere, and within the center of that is this colored warm water. And in that, you can immerse yourselves hanging on to each other for lovemaking or relaxing. Uh, the sphere will be kept in place within the volume by airflow, so it won't move around. But you can splash, and the water will come right back with little spheres into it. After a soak in the hot sphere, our couple retires to their honeymoon suite. 
There, they'll find Sam's rebuttal to Newton's third law, the Snuggle Tunnel. Oh, I told you. Meet me in the tunnel, baby. <laughs> Float on it. Tell us more about this here Snuggle Tunnel. So, pretend this is a giant window inside the honeymoon suite. So we have the, the fantastic panoramic view, and then they can expand this thing here, which is known as the Snuggle Tunnel. We have illumination inside, we'll have ventilation inside. As you can see, it's furry. You gotta have it furry, you gotta make it soft and comfortable for people to do, what, do their thing. They go in here, and then they're snuggling in the Snuggle Tunnel. I know I can't wait to get aboard that space yacht and join the 200 mile high club. The scientists are working on it as we speak. Mm, I wonder what this space piss tastes like. Hmm? Vonna Bonta, wrap this up for me, please. We are progeny of not just the Earth, but of the cosmos. And as its progeny, it is our duty to use the best of our abilities and continue that into other planets. Who knows what we'll find? To paraphrase the poet Dante, the heavens swirl above us and our eyes are still cast to the ground. She sounded so sexy when she said that. Uh oh, man. Uh oh. Nineteen eighty five white Lamborghini contact. Two of them. I need a slow motion video right now. Cause I'm moving in slow motion, slow motion. Feeling like Kite Williams shooting the nigga, Putin nigga, ayy. 